Today we are running a few service calls out here. We're starting out in the country here. Beautiful country. It's uh, Pender Lee, North Carolina. Just a small town, no stoplights, no post office. Just a fire station and a few stores. I love the colors of some of these trailers, they're great. So uh, we got a call up here, uh, halfway in between Wilmington and Clinton. Check your map. And uh, it's just a recharge. The lady can't afford to change her coil out, she wants to recharge it. Then we're gonna go back up to, let's see. Uh, Rocky Point, North Carolina, where we've been a few times, and potential blower failure. And then we're going to head into Wilmington, uh, right in the heart of Wilmington, for no cool. So we got a little bit of everything today. And uh, some horses there. Some dogs. We'll see if we can get some film on it. Uh, my, my company name is Town and Country which sort of fits today. Uh, we're going to be right in the heart of Wilmington, and we're going to be about as far away from the city as you can get. So uh, hopefully we'll get something interesting. Okay, our first call is a GSH-13030. It's a two and a half ton, 13 seer Goodman heat pump built in. It says 0607, so that is seventh month of 2006, so July 2006. We have the gauge hoses hooked up, red high side, blue low side, keep it simple. Uh, two K-type clamps, one for subcooling on the liquid line, one for superheat on the suction line right there near the service valves. And I will hook up the refrigerant as we will need it in a second, and the scale, and we'll get to work. Okay, as you see where the pressures are low, uh, our superheat is 56, and obviously our superheat is going to be lower than that. It won't be tremendously low because it's pretty warm inside, but you know, it's obviously not gonna be 56. But I'll let it run for a second. Subcooling is three still, so it, is ha it does have some subcooling. And our compressor is running at 6.9 amps. We'll see how that changes as we charge it. The running load amps, I think was 10 or 11. We are gonna set our parameters for finding our target superheat. Let's uh, plug these things. It'll take their measurements instead of the ones I want to input. Okay. So we have our indoor wet bulb, which I just measured at the return grill of 71. And our outdoor, which is, we're going to go with 72. So we're going to get a pretty good superheat here because of the high temperature inside and the low temperature outside. Target superheat is 27.4. And as you see, we are a little above that. So we'll start with adding uh, half a pound of refrigerant and we'll go from there. We are eight ounces in, and as you see, the pressures have uh, climbed up. Superheat's dropped slightly, not a whole lot, but you see the general trend. Pressure goes up, pressure goes up. Subcooling goes up, superheat goes down, adding charge. Of course, this is R22. And you see the compressor amps have slightly gone up as the pressure's gone up. So we'll continue up to a full pound and see what the difference is then. We're still putting refrigerant in. We're at a pound and a half and I see it's still quite low. I stopped it a second ago and the superheat was still in the low 40s. And uh, it was taking refrigerant real slow. Valve core down there, sometimes they will be a little bit more recessed and they, you don't get a lot of uh, refrigerant through them. So what I did was I actually took the valve core out of the heat charging port and I'm using it. I wouldn't do it for liquid, but uh, for vapor, it's taking a lot better, and I'm trying to get everything out of this jug, which is almost empty anyway. So it's definitely moving a little bit faster, even though the jug's almost empty. You can see the, the frost line there and there. But, uh, so that should speed things along a little bit. 
This is after three pounds, so we put quite a bit of refrigerant into the machine. Uh, low side pressure is coming up near 60, high side pressure is above 150 now, so the subcooling is above 10. Two peats lower, but still not down to our target. And I'm going to actually reach to the bottom area of that target. I'm going to go a little bit lower because as it warms outside, that superheat would be dropping. So, and it's dropping inside, so I'll probably go for the lower end of it. Uh, probably something like 22 to 25 instead of 27. So, uh, that's where we're at. Uh, we're going to let it run for a second, then we're going to charge up some more because I'm sure we're going to need a little bit more. And the amperage on the compressor is now 7.3. So as we put charge in, the pressure rises, the amperage rises on the compressor. All right, we got that charge pretty close, within half a degree of superheat here, and I'm sure it'll adjust a little bit and probably increase. I'll get a little bit lower in the superheat area, but uh, we're all squared away. Uh, it'll probably settle out a little bit lower than that, and uh, I'll probably keep it where it is. But that's after almost five pounds of refrigerant there and a machine that holds about double that. So it's looked about half its charge in the last couple of years. The evaporator's leaking, they don't have the money to fix it. Uh, buying them some time to save up and fix it. You see the super is still falling a little bit. So, a little overcharge is not gonna hurt anybody in this one because it will be an undercharge for too long anyway. Uh, as long as it's pretty mild overcharge. You don't want to overcharge something a whole lot of danger. Alright, let's look at the amperes. 7.7, 7.8 amps. So you see how it's increased the whole time we've been charging. Almost increased in amp or so. I'm sure uh, this weekend when it's 95, it'll be a little bit higher than that. So we're pretty good for today, and we'll move on to the next one. Our next call here is a house in Wilmington. A very large house. What I like to call the old money section of Wilmington. This one is going to be an easy one. It's faster, it's very obviously blunt. And we could use a coil cleaning. So we'll get down to business. One of all four sides here look pretty grungy. Yeah. That is our blown capacitor. It's a 55 5 at 440. And I will go get a similar capacitor and put it in. And then we will go to cleaning this bad boy with the coil gun. Well, I think we're going to have to take it apart because this is pretty dirty. So we're going to have to take the unit apart and spray this spine fin down because it is funky. This is the dirt that came off that coil, but the problem is the coil is degraded as well. We're going to clean the coil, but uh, this coil isn't looking too good. So whether or not this is uh, going to be this unit's final summer, I don't know. But the coil is definitely not looking too hot. I don't know about the condition of the indoor unit. I worked on it a couple years ago, but uh, it seemed fine. But we're going to give it a good cleaning, as much as it can take. And as you see, there's plenty of spine fins laying on the ground. Because we are, after all, three, four miles from the ocean. And even at that distance, you do get a little bit of corrosion. Not like the ones we saw the other day, but you definitely see it in the coils over enough time. And this one's uh, 98, I think. So it's 14 years old now. We're going to clean it up as best we can. This thing's fantastic. It'll definitely eat through some uh, coal cleaner though. I want to give a little demonstration there. Thank you, John Israel. Coal, coal gun's one of my best friends now. All right, we're gonna let it stew in its own funk for a minute. I don't know if y'all can hear that. But that's the old Goodman turning on over there. Oh. Let's stew in there for a minute. And see if we eat some of that crap off there, and I'll wash it off. All right, here's our after picture. See, we're looking much better. So we should be night and day difference there as far as our cooling capability. Uh, I saw one of these one time. So muddled up it was only getting three or four degrees and when it was cleaned off it was getting 17 degrees so I expect that sort of improvement from this one because it was dirty on all four sides I started up the unit and uh, the pressure shows 86 on the low side that's not actually true I'm putting refrigerant in because it was 30 the high side was around 165 so I put a little bit of refrigerant in there 
Uh, I'm not able to know the true superheat because I can't go outside right now because the nanny went for errands. Uh, I'm going to bring it down to the 30 degree range and hopefully she'll be back. I can finish the charge. But it looks like another leaky unit. XC 1010 sear, straight cool. Made it 98. So we'll see what happens. I'll put a little refrigerant into it. See how she does. We got the old train down to the proper superheat, which ended up being 22 degrees. But the subcooling was real high, and the high temperature on the discharge line was pretty high. The pressure was pretty high, and uh, that could be due to the spine fin, spine fin coil being degraded. Uh, it's also tense sear, and so uh, it runs a little hot, but it's in good shape. It does have a leak, so it's a good candidate for replacement. But we'll see what they want to do. But that is all for today. Start her back up, bring her back to life. That's how she does. She lives another day. <laughs>